speak to you again. Uh, it's sunny in Swansea, which is uh, fantastic. I don't know whether it'll last, but it's sunny right now. And, uh, and as always, uh, cheers us all up, doesn't it? Now we come to a, ra a ra well, it's not a random group, but a group of books called Wisdom Books. And I think that the devil's very cleverly made us follow rules and laws when we read the Bible and then it becomes too difficult and we start to say if we haven't read a certain amount in a day we're a failure and uh, if a Christian uh, needs to follow a plan and sometimes thanks God he's not like other Christians who don't follow plans whereas that's not what the Bible is like at all the Bible is a conversation a chat from God to you a conversation you can understand a conversation that's a delight a conversation where God's law shows you your saviour and great news and these books especially all different lengths and sizes are so full of great news great news if you're an outsider like Ruth she couldn't be more outside her family uh, she married a believer who should never have been there, should never have married her. Everything about her was all wrong. And yet, she puts her trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Her God becomes the people of God's God. And she's not just brought into the family. She's actually brought into the family line, family tree of the Lord Jesus Christ. She is great-grandmother of David, King David. What a God we have. What a loving, kind God. And if you're an outsider, you feel like I could never, ever go to heaven. I could never belong. Put your trust in Jesus. There's a book called Ruth. It's well worth reading and seeing how a woman way on the outside can be brought in by people who look like Jesus, but mainly by Jesus Christ himself. Then you've got a book like Daniel, where the Christians are the outsiders. They're in Babel. Babylon that looks like it is ruling the world. It looks like the kingdom of God doesn't uh, succeed or win. It's what it appears. But Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, they all realise that this isn't the end. In fact, the real kingdom, the real God, is the God of heaven. And that's a phrase Daniel uses. When people are confused, even the most powerful man in the world, and not the wisest people, have answers. Daniel says there is a God in heaven. And the most incredible thing is, is that the Son of Man is going to come into this world. And he's going to conquer all the other kingdoms of this world, as terrifying as they might appear. And he will ascend before the Ancient of Days. And all authority in heaven and earth and all peoples and nations and men of every language worship him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion and will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. That's the most incredible thing. Since Jesus Christ has ascended into heaven, the kingdom of God continues to grow. And that's the great joy and hope of the Christian. As terrifying as all that's going on around appears, it's all happened before. And in the end, the kingdom of God is the only kingdom that will stand. I find the second half of Daniel as exciting as the first half. First half is men who are standing for Christ. And Christ stands with them in the furnace. Men standing for Christ and seeing the great powers bow down. And trust him but then we see these incredible pictures as we look at the swirl and terror of life and realize the most blessed person is the person who waits to the end and sees that Jesus is coming back and he is in charge of all things so when you look at the Bible read it because God is breathing through it and wants to speak to you and he wants to speak to you good news of his son and bad news about all the false ways of living good news of the kingdom that lasts forever 
and bad news for all who think there is not a God in heaven who has purposes. And so these books continue. We might take a break uh, because it's Mark, we're reading Mark as a church next week and it's a big project. We might not uh, and uh, we'll do other things but I certainly uh, will speak to you tomorrow and uh, God bless you. I pray that you'd have a lovely uh, day. Bye.